Hello and welcome to Big Fish Kids Club this week. It's so great to have you back with us. Yes, it is. Hello. Um, as always, I'm Steve. And I'm Becky. And Elisha is around here as well. And I'm sure you'll see him in a little bit. We hope that you had a great half term. Sorry that we weren't around last week, but we hope you enjoyed some of the videos that we posted up. But we've got lots of exciting things, as always, for you this week. Yes, we do. We have a song and a story and a bit with Luke. And we also have some craft as well, don't we? Yes, but we'll come to that in a minute because yes. we're going to do our game slash warm up first. I'm going to do that. Then Becky will tell you about the craft and then we'll do our song. So okay. if you screw it away, I'll do our bit of a warm up. So instead of a game this week, we thought we would do a bit of a warm up. Just get you ready and ready to go for the actions in the song so you don't stretch any muscles or anything like that. So what you need to do is you need to copy me. So what we're going to do, we're going to stretch up as high as you can. Stretch up. We're stretch on low. Stretch over this way. Stretch over that way. Give your arms a bit of a shake out, that kind of thing. Give your jaw a bit of a workout ready for the singing. That's it. Give yourself nice ready. A couple of jumps. That's good. Stretch down, touch your toes. There we go. That's it. Good. Touch your toes. Excellent. Hopefully you're nice and warmed up, ready to go. But before we get to our song, Becky is going to come back and remind us a little bit about what you need for your craft this week. So, as always, it was posted up on Tuesday, wasn't it, on our yes. Facebook page? But if you didn't see it, these are the things you need to get. Nice yep. and quickly. Okay, so the things you will need for craft this week are you will need the inner from a roll of kitchen roll, uh, an inner from a toilet roll, some scissors, a roll of sellotape, some string, um, a cocktail stick and some pencils as well. Okay, so hopefully you got all of that stuff. Hopefully you've gathered it beforehand or you're able to gather it partway during this. But now we're going to do our song. It's a song we did a couple of weeks ago, a song I love so much, a song called All Through History, which talks about how amazing God has been through history, but how he is still amazing today. So sing as best you can, do the best actions you can, and we'll see you in a minute. <laughs> And animals afloat. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and no one lived his life for him. Moses led his people through the sea, taking them away from slavery. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Moses lived his life for him.
doing? I'm good, thank you. Steve, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Luke, Luke did you have a good half term? Did you enjoy the break? I sat by the side of a paddling pool oh. and I drank squash. It was amazing! Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Now, Luke, do you remember what our story was two weeks ago? We've got to think back two weeks now. Do you remember what the story was about? That was a long time ago, Steve. It was Steve. a long time ago. It might help you to remember. It was the, it's the story that Becky told rather than Steve telling the story. Well, me. You, you know. I was going to say, you yeah. meant you then. Yeah, I meant me. Oh, Becky, we're so amazing. She tells stories so wow. Oh, she's really good at telling stories, isn't she? Yeah. 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 So it was the paralyzed man who she called Claudio, yeah, but definitely. that wasn't his name. Well, uh, we don't know what his name was, do we? Because the no. Bible doesn't say, but she called him Claudio. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he was lowered down through the roof by his friends. Didn't he have amazing friends? He did. Oh, it's great to have friends like that, isn't it? Yeah. I like she's doing a bit of the filming at the moment. That's Oh, yeah. ah, okay. getting the camera ready. So, um, but do you remember as well what the name was of Jesus in that one? Um, son of... Someone? Yeah, that's right. He was called Son of Man. Now, you're probably getting a bit confused because actually, because it was Son of David the week before, then it was Son of Man. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And do you know, Luke, our name this week actually links back not to the Son of Man, but to the Son of David one. Really? Which was when we had Bartimaeus, who was blind, but Jesus helped him to see. Now, yeah. if you remember, when we talked about the Son of um, Man, no, the son of David, sorry, son of David, we talked about how it referred to a special title that was given to Jesus. Can you remember what that title was? Uh, something about being untidy. It wasn't about being untidy, Luke. It wasn't about being messy. It was about the Messiah. Oh, yeah. The Messiah. And Luke, the Messiah was the one that God had promised he was going to come from the very beginning. And really? that's actually our name this week. Ooh, yeah. that's interesting. If you remember, the first story we did about the names of Jesus was actually about Adam and Eve in the garden and how they messed up and did things that were wrong. But at that point, God promised that his offspring, Jesus, was going to come and was going to save everybody. And that's the Messiah that the Jews were waiting for. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Isn't it? So this week, we're going to look at that name Messiah. And actually, somebody who is looking for the Messiah, knowing the Messiah was going to come and didn't realise that he was actually there right in front of them. It's a great story this week, Luke. Okay? Yes. So, what, what are you doing, Luke? Looking, Looking, like you said. Oh, yeah. Well, this person, they didn't have to really look for the Messiah because the Messiah was right in front of them. They just didn't realise that's who it was. Ooh. So, should we go and listen to the story and find out what it's all about? One sec. Yes, please. Oh, my friend is by here. He hasn't said hello Ooh. to you yet. Oh, you going to say hello to Luke? No, you don't want to say hello to Luke. Okay. Hello. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Elisha doesn't seem to want to say hello to you, but should we say goodbye, Luke? Do you want to go and pop down in your bunk, settle down nice and quiet, and bye. then you can listen up to the story like everyone else? Ah, bye. bye. There we go. We say bye to Luke. Excellent. So, as Luke heads off down there to get himself comfy, you get yourself comfy as well, because the story this week is a great story. And look out for that name as well, Messiah, and see just who was looking for that Messiah. I've got a fantastic story for you today that takes place in a place called Samaria. And our story begins just as the sun was starting to poke its way over the mountains. And as the sun's rays were shining down on the town in that place, it would have started to shine through the windows of the houses. And slowly, just at that very early point in the morning, the women in the houses would have started to stir and get up because the women had a very important job to do at the very beginning of the day. As soon as the sun rose, the women in that village would all get up and they would all head out to do a very important job. And as they headed out of their houses, they would probably have started to gather in little groups, making their way out of the town, down to the special place where they needed to go. And as they were gathering along, they would probably chat about the things that had happened the day before, what had been going on, that kind of thing, and gathered in little groups, talking about all of those things, making their way down to the place outside the town where they needed to go. You see, the place where they needed to go was actually down to the well. 
You see, they needed to go down to the well to get some water, all the water they were going to need for that day. And the reason they did it first thing in the morning was because later in the day it would have got too hot, so they did it when it was nice and cool because it was a really tough job to do. Now, nowadays, if we want water, we just go and turn on the tap, don't we? And out comes water. But that didn't happen back in Jesus' time. They had to go to a place like a well to get the water. And still, in some places around the world today, they still have to do that. Now, these women would have had special jars that looked a bit like this by here with two huge handles. Now, if we saw a big jar like that, we'd probably just pick it up and carry it along in front of us, wouldn't we? But they were really, really clever. You see, they didn't just carry it like this, because that would be a really tough thing when it was full of water, trying to balance it along all the way back to the town. No, no, what they did is they would take it and they would place it on top of their heads. Now, <laughs> I wonder whether they would have started off, first of all, with it up there practicing, perhaps without any water in, to make sure they could walk along nice and safely without spilling anything. Then if they got more confident, they would have perhaps taken one hand down. And then when they got really confident, they would have taken both hands down, just had the jar balancing on top of their heads, making sure they didn't spill a single drop of water all the way back to the town. Now, I'm sure that the reason that the women did this is because us men can sometimes mess around a bit. We'd have probably thrown water at each other, chucked things over each other. And by the time we got back up to the town, there probably wouldn't have been any water left at all. But this is what the women did. All of the women went down to the well first thing in the morning when it was nice and cool to get their water. When I say all of the women, that is all of the women in this town or village, apart from, well, one woman. Now, the Bible doesn't actually tell us the name of this woman, but I can't just keep calling her the woman with no name, can I? Because that would be rather silly. So I'm going to give her a name. I'm going to call her Samantha. Now, that probably wasn't her name, but I'm going to call her Samantha because, as I said before, this was a place called Samaria, and it sort of rhymes, doesn't it? Samantha of Samaria. So we'll call her Samantha for our story today. And you see, Samantha didn't go down first thing in the morning. In fact, Samantha waited until the middle of the day when it was really, really hot, and then she would go down to the well. She did it at that time because she was sure that there would be no one else around. You see, the reason that Samantha didn't go down to the well with all the other women was because, actually, Samantha didn't have a single one of these at all. Now, if you haven't seen this before, watch very carefully. I'm going to paint yellow letters with my red paintbrush. So watch very carefully. Here we go. She didn't have one of these. There's an F. And there's an R. And there's an I. And there's an E. And there's an N. And there's a D. She didn't have a single friend at all. Can you imagine how sad she must have been not having a single friend at all? Now, I'm sure you've all got lots and lots of friends, but Samantha didn't have a single friend in the whole wide world. You see, the reason for that was because Samantha used to do, well, lots of things that weren't very nice at all. You see, the Bible tells us that Samantha wasn't a very nice person. That she used to tell things like this by here. The Bible tells us that she used to tell lies. Now we know, don't we, that we should never ever tell lies. We should always tell the truth. Um, but you know, Samantha sometimes told lies. And you know, the problem with lies is that, well, they always get found out. Even if nobody finds out here on earth, actually the Bible says that God knows everything that's going on and so God finds out as well. And the problem is when we tell lies then people feel as though they can't trust us and they don't want to be our friend and that was the problem for Samantha. Nobody wanted to be her friend because they didn't think they could trust her because she told lies. But as well as that, the Bible says that when we do things like that, like telling lies, actually it causes a great big problem because it actually divides us from God. It means we're divided from him, cut off from him, and we can't get to know God and one day be with him, which is really, really bad. But God loves us so much, he's done something about it. I'll tell you about that in a bit. Well, anyway, Samantha didn't just tell lies. Samantha used to also, well, do this by here. Samantha used to cheat. But she didn't just cheat on games, she used to cheat on other people as well. She wasn't a very nice person at all. She didn't just lie and she didn't just cheat, but she, well, she also used to do this by here. 
she used to steal. But she didn't steal things, she used to steal other people's best friends. I'm sure that's why the other women in the village didn't like her very much at all. And probably because of the fact that she told lies and cheated and steal, she might have also got into lots of these as well. The Bible doesn't tell us, but I imagine she probably did because of all the other things she was doing. She used to end up in lots and lots of fights. Samantha wasn't a very nice person at all. I wonder whether some of the women in the village would secretly call her Nasty Samantha because they didn't like her one little bit. But I wonder as well whether sometimes when Samantha was telling lies or cheating or stealing or getting into fights, she used to sometimes think, she used to feel a bad feeling inside and think, oh, why did I do that? Oh, I wish I hadn't done it. And you know, we might be the same as well. Sometimes when you do things that are wrong, perhaps your mums or your dads or your teachers ask you, why did you do that? You say, I don't know why I did it. It's made me feel really bad and oh, I wish I hadn't done it. I wonder if that's how Samantha felt sometimes as well. Now this one day, when Samantha headed down to the well, in the middle of the day, so she was sure there would be no one else around, things were a bit different. Because you see, as she approached the well, she could see that there was someone else down at the well already. Which was odd because she went when there would be no one else around, but what was even more odd was that actually the person down at the well was actually, well, a man. And men never ever went down to the well. They left it for the women to get the water. But Samantha thought, well, I'll just put my water jar down. I'll sort out my water. I won't bother with the man. It'll be fine. So she put her water jar down and then she heard a voice say, um, excuse me, um, can I have some water, please? Samantha probably looked around because a man like this man never ever spoke to women like Samantha. So she thought he was probably speaking to someone else, but she realised, well, no, there was no one else there. It was just her and this man. The man was speaking to her. Now, as I said, men never used to speak to people like Samantha, and especially men from the place where this man was from. They didn't like the Sumerians at all, the people that Samantha belonged to. So she was really surprised. But you see, this wasn't any ordinary man. You see, the man down at the well that day wasn't just a man. He was someone really, really special. It was actually this person by here. The man down at the well that day was actually Jesus. Now Jesus looked at Samantha and he said, actually, do you know, instead of you giving me some water, why don't I give you some water? The water I give to you is living water. It will never, ever run out. Now Samantha looked at him really rather confused. She said, um, how are you going to give me some water? You don't have a cup or a jar or anything like that at all. Jesus said, no, 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 you don't understand. The water that I give to you will actually not ease your thirst for a drink, but actually will ease your thirst for life. It will actually clean you up on the inside of all the things that you've done that are wrong. But it won't just clean you up of the things you've done that are wrong, but it will clean up all those feelings of all of those bad things that you've done that are wrong as well. Samantha was a bit confused now. How was Jesus going to give her water that could clean her up of all the things? Well, you see, Jesus knew that a little while after this, he was going to do something amazing, something incredible that would sort out all the things that Samantha had ever done that were wrong. You see, he was going to do something to sort out those things that separate us from him. You see, what Jesus did by actually coming to this earth, he came down out of heaven and he lived a perfect life. But then a little while after this story took place, he was going to go and he was going to be placed on a cross. Not for anything that he'd done wrong, because he'd never done anything wrong. But he was being put there for all the things that Samantha had done that were wrong. But not just all the things that Samantha had done that were wrong, but all the things that I've done that are wrong. And all the things that you've done that are wrong and all the things that anybody's done that are wrong. So that anybody could turn to him and say they're sorry for all of those things, put their trust in him and be forgiven. And he says that when we're forgiven like that, he sends in his Holy Spirit, which is like this living water, which comes in, cleans us up on the inside, makes us brand new, makes us the people that we're meant to be, people who live for God and worship him and actually can one day get to be with him forever.
Well, Samantha was getting more and more confused by this conversation, but then Jesus did something really rather strange. You see, Jesus had never met Samantha before, but he started to tell Samantha all the things that she'd done that were wrong. Samantha probably stood there and she, her face would have looked a bit like, Huh? 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 How on earth did Jesus know all of these things? You see, the Bible tells us, doesn't it, that Jesus wasn't just a man, but Jesus was actually God here on earth. So he knew everything about Samantha, all the good things, but also all the bad things as well. Samantha started to realise, though, that Jesus, even though he knew all these bad things about her, Jesus still wanted to know her. Jesus still wanted to be her friend. Samantha started to get more and more excited. And she said, look... You seem like a really wise person. You seem to know lots of things. Well, maybe you can answer this thing that I've always worried about. You see, us Sumerians, we say that we should worship God and I go and sing praises to him up on top of the mountain. But, but you Jews, you say that we should do it in the temple down in Jerusalem. What's well, right? And Jesus said to her, he said, look, there's going to be a time coming where it won't be about going up to a mountain to worship God or going to a special temple to see God there. Actually, God will be everywhere. You'll be able to worship him no matter where you are because he will come and live inside you. She said, oh, I know about that. I know that the Bible has promised that the Messiah is going to come and when he comes, he'll explain everything to us. You see, the Messiah was the one that they expected to come, the one who was going to be sent from God, who was going to change everything. Jesus turned to her and said, I am the Messiah. I'm the one you've been waiting for. Samantha couldn't believe it. This was the most incredible thing ever. The person that everyone had been waiting for, the one who was going to make sure that we could all get back to God by putting our trust in him, was there in front of her. And even though he knew the things that she'd done that are wrong, he still wanted to be her friend. She was so excited, she ran straight back to the town as quick as she could. And she started to shout, hey, everybody, get out here, quick. Come, I've got to show you something amazing. The people were probably wondering, what's going on out there? Perhaps they went to their windows, they twitched the curtains back a bit to have a look. Oh, it's just that nasty Samantha out there. What trouble she got herself into now. But then as they looked, they would have seen there was something different about Samantha. You see, she no longer had a scowl on her face like she normally would, but instead she had a great big smile. They went out to find out what was going on. She said, I met a man down by the well and he knew all the things wrong about me, but actually, he still wanted to be my friend. And actually he said he could clean me up on the inside of all these things that I've done that are wrong and give me a brand new life, a brand new start. And one day allow me to be with God in heaven because I would be part of his family. Samantha was so, so excited because she realized that she had the most amazing friend ever. She had a friend in Jesus. And you know, when I was the same age as some of you are now, somebody explained to me about the cross, how it showed just how much Jesus loved me, that he was willing to come and die for all the things that I've done that are wrong so that I could be forgiven. And you know, like Samantha, I turned and I said, Jesus, I'm really sorry for all those things that I've done that are wrong. Thank you that you still want to get to know me. Thank you that you still want me to be part of your family. Thank you for what you've done for me on the cross. Jesus, will you please forgive me of all of those things? I want to put my trust in you and follow you and one day get to be with you. And you know, the amazing thing is that Jesus says when he died on that cross, he wasn't just dying for the things that Samantha had done wrong. And he wasn't just dying for the things that I've done that are wrong. But he was dying there so that anybody could turn and put their trust in him, be forgiven of the things they've done that are wrong and be part of his family and one day get to be with him forever. That's the most amazing and incredible news. Like Samantha, I was so excited when I realized I had a friend in Jesus that I wanted to go out and tell everybody as well, which is why I do stories like this and go into schools and things like that to tell people all about Jesus and how amazing he is and how much he loves each and every one of us and wants all of us to put our trust in him and become part of his family. I wonder, have you ever done that? Have you ever turned to Jesus and said you're sorry for the things you've done that are wrong and put your trust in him? Do you know that you're part of his family? Well, if you haven't done that, why not do that today? 
If you're not sure what to do, then just message us and we would love to explain a little bit more about how you too can become part of God's family. But anyway, I love that story about Samantha or whatever the woman's name was and how amazing it was when she realised what a difference Jesus could make in her life. Well, it's time now for us to pray. Now, if you've been at Big Fish Kids Club before, you know that we don't just put our hands together and close our eyes, but we do a little drill. So, hands on shoulders, ready to go. When I say one, you just put your hands up like this. When I say two, you just cross your arms like this. When I say three, close your eyes, bow your head. I'm going to pray, which means speaking to God, but also listening to him as well. So it's good for us to be quiet and listen to see what he has to say to us. Then I'm going to say amen. Then I'll say four. I need everyone sat up nice and straight really quickly, ready for the next part of Big Fish Kids Club. So you ready? Here we go. One. Oh, you need to be quicker than that. You need to be as quick as you can possibly be. You're ready. Here we go. One person might be the one that's not ready and so could let us down. So everybody ready. Everybody ready. Here we go. Here we go. One. That was good. Two. Three. God, I thank you so, so much that you loved us so much that you were willing to come and die on the cross for us. I thank you that even though we do things that are wrong, like Samantha, you don't turn us away, but you're willing to forgive us if we just turn and say we're sorry to you and put our trust in you. God, I pray you help us understand what that means and help us know what it means to be part of your family and one day get to be with you forever. Amen. Four. Sound nice and straight. Excellent. Well, now we're going to move on to the next bit of our Big Fish Kids Club where we're going to have a look at our craft. So let's have a look and see what amazing craft Becky has for us this week. Wasn't that a great story Steve just told? Wasn't it brilliant? Yeah. So, shall we look at this week's memory verse? So, our, our memory verse this week is, Our God is a God who saves. Psalm, mm -hmm. Psalm chapter 68, verse 20. So, it's like what Steve was saying about how God sent Jesus to come down and he was talking to Samantha and telling and talking to her and explaining things to her at the well. Okay, so, and talking about a well, that is what our craft is going to be today. Now, mums and dads, if you don't have um, a roll, a tube like this one, <laughs> um, because they've been used for other crafts, mm -hmm, then, um, you can just roll a piece of card and get a similar kind of shape. You don't necessarily need it to be as long as this. But, um, yeah. Oh, I think Mummy's going to keep that one. And also, I did mention it in the post, but if you're using a cocktail stick, if you can think of something else that works great, um, or you might want to just file down the points on these because they're very sharp. So, we are going to be making a well and a bucket to go in the well. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is, um, I'm actually going to use this a second, and I'm going to use a pencil as well. So, I put a mark there, and a mark there, and one in the middle for where that one is. Great, okay, and then, if I can keep it straight, you want to do a mark a mark there on the other side. Okay, so what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to put marks in such a way that mean that you get... Um, so you're going to have two bits that stand upright from the other bits, um, which your um, cocktail stick can go through, and then you can put some string that will go, they'll pull the bucket up and down. So what we're going to do... I'm going to cut the bigger one first, so my scissors. So you only... You probably only want a couple of centimetres wide. You need it to be wide enough that it's going to be strong enough around the cocktail stick, but it doesn't need to be too wide. And you're probably going to want to go down maybe, yes, five, five centimetres or so. You don't want to do too far because otherwise you'll be cutting it all day and it's a bit fiddly as it is, okay? So. so. <laughs> mm. 
there. Okay, so once you've... Okay, so it's a bit fiddly, so you might want to ask a grown-up to help you with this bit. So you want to cut, but you want to leave these two bits that you've just cut out like this. You want to leave those two alone, and you want to cut the big bits. Okay? Big bits. <laughs> I'll cut that for you after, okay? So... Okay, so. so now you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Okay, then you're going to take, if you've got a ball of string, that hasn't all been unwound. <laughs> you're going to take a ball of string or something, you're going to put it underneath it. Okay, you might, again, you might want to ask a grown up to help you with this. So we're going to put a hole by there. Careful, please, Elisha, and a hole by 
There, right. So, as I said, ask a grown-up to do this for you, maybe. So you need to make a hole. You could use a hole punch, or you could use a pen. That kind of thing. Don't use scissors like I'm doing. Okay. But I'm using the ball of string so that it's not going to break or damage anything. So now I've got holes on both sides. Okay, not on the table, please, Elisha. No, not on the table. Okay, and then you're going to put your stick through there. And then you should have the top of our well. If you want to use some of your spare card that you've got left over to make sure to put a bottom on the well, then you can do. <laughs> um, right, buddy, buddy, can you go to daddy, please? Because no one can see. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so. And then you're going to want some string to go down inside your well. So I'm going to do uh, that much. So you want it to go down into the well, but you also want a bit left over so that you can pull it back up again. Right. Okay, so... With your toilet roll, what you're going to want to do is you want to squash it just a little bit and then cut it maybe just about a third of it. So part of it, not all of it. Like that. So, so you have a little bit like this. And then you're going to cut it in okay so i've cut it in four different places one two three four yeah. so then and then i'm going to fold the four sections in you okay He's asking for uh, his um, yes. So then you're going to take some cello tape and put it across the bottom by there to hold all the sides together. Okay, and so that is taking part of your toilet roll. You're going to cut into it four times. Then you're going to fold those in, and then you're going to tape over it like this. Okay? And then what you can do as well is you can draw round. Ah, cool. Beep, beep, is it? Okay, yeah. so I've drawn around the bottom of my bucket. Okay, and then might be too much. So, what you're also going to want to do is you want to just going to sellotape that on the bottom. You might not want to put this on the bottom of it, but it just means it looks like a full bucket rather than one with a hole in the bottom. Okay? So. Oh. You're colouring too, are you, buddy? And then you're going to tape that onto the bottom of your bucket as... So. <laughs> okay. 
So you've done that, you're going to want to take a smaller bit of string. And you are going to tape this bit of string to both sides.